Hmm, looking for something slimy? Well, many people tend to believe that snails are just slugs with shells. But even though they look so similar, they're completely different species. Slugs don't need any protective shells, as all their internal organs are, well, internal, inside their slimy bodies. They can squish themselves and get into hard-to-reach places, which is why slugs can often be found in the most unlikely spaces, like under tree bark, or inside tiny crevices, or at the library pretending to study for exams. Snails, on the other hand, are tightly connected with their shells and can't survive without one. Unlike hermit crabs, which replace their shells as they grow, snails are born with a shell on their back. Baby snails look adorable with those fragile translucent bubbles that calcify and become bigger and tougher with age. Cute? Well, you be the judge. Many of the snail's internal organs are inside the shell too, meaning that if it gets crushed or damaged, well, the animal would probably not survive. Still, a snail can repair small scratches and cracks in the shell with the help of proteins and calcium secreted by its mantle. Now, turtles are very close to snails in this regard, by the way, because contrary to common myth, they can't leave their shell at a whim either. A turtle's shell is an integral part of its body, and despite the reptile being able to hide its head and paws inside to protect itself from predators, its skeleton is fused with the hard shell. And just like any other animal skeleton, it grows with the turtle itself. Now, koalas do only eat eucalyptus leaves, but there are over 600 different kinds of those. And koalas only munch on 30, or just 5% of what's available on the menu. So it has to be a very specific eucalyptus tree to make a good meal for a picky koala. These adorable creatures also have something in common with domestic cats. They sleep for 18 to 20 hours a day. Polar bears aren't at all white. Their skin is black under the fur. They need the white color to disguise themselves while on the hunt. The color black absorbs the sun better than any other, while white fur doesn't stop sunlight. Rays pass right through it. In a sense, a polar bear has transparent fur. There's a myth that dogs and cats see the world in black and white. In reality, they just can't distinguish some colors. Nobody knows how exactly dogs see. Some think they only distinguish two colors. Could be blue and yellow, for all we know. But they can see shades of other colors better than people. And cats have wonderful night vision. They need about seven times less light than a human to see in the dark. Now, giraffes were thought to be mute. But recently, it's been found that they make low-frequency sounds at night to communicate with each other. During the day, they don't say a word and warn each other of danger in a very unusual way by moving their well-developed eyebrows. It's likely that at night, it's difficult to see the eyebrows, so they start talking for real. While we're on the topic of giraffes, these animals sleep much more than 30 minutes a day, but probably not as much as you do. Their sleeping pattern is quite typical. After researchers monitored a herd of giraffes, they found out they slept at night and took short naps in the afternoon. In total, each giraffe had around 5 hours of sleep every day. Oh, and by the way, a herd of these guys is actually known as a tower of giraffes. Makes sense with the long necks. Seagulls can drink seawater. There are salt-secreting glands near their eyes. These glands purify seawater very quickly, and the salty residue comes out through the nostrils. Yep, you guessed it, salty snot. The Adelie penguins are real romantics. They only have one partner for life. The male must give a smooth stone to the female to create a family. You could say that's kind of an engagement ring. Like humans, though, a female penguin may refuse and not accept the ring. Hmm. Speaking of animal love, foxes are romantic too. Male foxes are good fathers and husbands. They're devoted to their loved ones for life. They look after the females and even pick fleas from their fur. Ah. Male foxes improve their whole houses and take an active part in their baby's upbringing. Dolphins can sleep with one eye closed and the other one open. Half of the brain dreams and rests, yes. and the second half closely monitors the environment for signs of danger. The perfect brain for sleeping during boring classes and meetings. Hey, I didn't say that. Besides, dolphins manually control their breathing. They can simply drown if their whole brain is sleeping. Sea otters are the cutest sleepers among all animals. In the summer, because of the heat, 
sea otters spend all the time in water. They swim on their backs and sleep in that position. The babies are sleeping on their mother's stomach, and two adults hold each other by the paws so that they're not carried apart by water currents. Ostriches don't stick their heads in the sand when threatened. In fact, these guys don't bury their heads at all. This myth has spread thanks to that famous idiom to hide one's head in the sand. In real life, ostriches have to dig holes in the sand for their eggs because they're flightless birds. To make sure they're evenly heated, ostriches put their heads in there to rotate the eggs from time to time. But ostriches still have some escaping mentality. When they face some threat, they can flop to the sand and stay perfectly still, pretending they aren't alive. Now, according to a popular misbelief, sharks can breathe only while moving because swimming helps them push water over their gills. Although many kinds of sharks are designed this way, many others, like bottom-dwelling nurse sharks, don't need swimming to pump oxygen-rich water over their gills. Meanwhile, all sharks do lack swim bladders, so if they stop swimming, they'll probably sink to the bottom. But luckily, a shark's body can't be compressed. That's why rapid descents or ascents are safe for them. Scientists from Japan played audio recordings for cats to prove they're truly dismissive. In those recordings, the owners of the cats called them by their names. Cats' pupils dilated, the animals moved their tails, legs, or ears. Cats heard people, but rarely responded. It's all about evolution. Cats came to people because they were attracted by mice that ate grains. They lived close to people, but were never tame. And yet, we keep feeding them. Birds are actually the only surviving dinosaurs. They evolved from theropods, the dinosaurs that ran on two legs. Yep, T. rex is a distant relative of chickens, ostriches, and even hummingbirds. In reality, flamingos are white. The bird turns pink due to beta-carotene. This pigment is found in the algae and the shrimp that it feeds on. You can change your color too. If you eat a lot of carrots, your skin will turn slightly orange. This will happen because of the high beta-carotene content in the vegetable. Sailors from all over the world talked about the giant squid they met on their voyages. For many years, scientists considered monsters with long tentacles to be a myth. But in 2004, the first photo of a giant squid was taken. They actually exist. Scientists have registered an animal that has grown to 43 feet. Mosquitoes actually bite some people more than others. The most delicious humans are those with type O blood. Also, these insects have really good eyesight. They're attracted by green, black, and red colors. So check the color of your clothes before you go camping. You can actually put a shark in a trance for 15 minutes. To do this, you need to stroke the nose of a dangerous animal with your hand. This sort of hypnosis is called tonic immobility that happens thanks to the receptors in the shark's nose. When stroked, the receptors send a lot of signals and the shark's brain is unable to process them all. Now, what it doesn't say here is exactly how you get close enough to a shark to rub its nose. I'd say that's important information, don't you think? Elephants aren't afraid of mice, per se. But these massive animals have bad vision. They also move fairly slowly. That's why they can get startled by a bird or a small creature, like a mouse darting past them. Just the element of surprise, nothing more. The chameleon can change its color, but this creature doesn't do it to camouflage itself. The color change helps the animal regulate its temperature and communicate with peers. Now, when most dogs pant, their tongues hang out of their mouths. That's why many people think that's how they sweat. In reality, dog sweat glands are located on their paw pads. Plus, there are other sweat glands all over their bodies. Dogs pant to evaporate moisture from their nasal passages, tongues, and the lining of their lungs. This also helps to cool them down. You might leave wasps alone, but don't be so sure they'll do the same. Bees do respect human boundaries, and if you don't bother them, they won't hurt you. But wasps are so bad-tempered, they can sting you even if you're just walking by their nest. Well, phooey on them! Let's get into the perfect world of felines. From the sand cat that can go for weeks without drinking water, to the first cat that went to space. Here are the 10 interesting cat facts for you to enjoy and be informed about. This train station is in Japan. 
What makes it special is its employees. In Kishi Station, a cat named Tama used to work as a station master. The building has cat eyes and ears. Yep, they constructed the station building that way. There's even a Tama-themed Tama train. If you want to remember this famous cat station master forever, you can buy some souvenirs. To get there, you need to start your journey from Wakayama Station. The guidance board there has illustrations of Tama. And when you climb the stairs, cat paw prints accompany you. Now that's cute. My first reaction when I looked at the picture of a sand cat was, Oh, I want to smooch this cute face and pet its fluffy paws. Then I kept reading about it and understood that this cutie is a fierce predator capable of eating snakes and scorpions. This species is unique because they're the only cats living primarily in the desert. Sand cats mostly hunt at night. These animals mainly eat small rodents, but they also go after birds, hares, and insects. They even hunt venomous vipers. Maybe that's why our kittens at home also wake us up at 3 a.m. and run from one room to another. Moreover, they don't need much water. They can go for weeks without a single sip. They get all the moisture they need from the prey they eat. Sand cats can live from 23 to 126 degrees Fahrenheit. By the way, they have fur under their paws too. These are much fluffier compared to a regular cat's paw. The fur under their paws is not just there to protect the paw from the burning sand. It works as a cushion that allows the feline to walk on the sand without sinking into it. Because of that, they don't leave any footprints behind. They're kind of impossible to track for researchers. The cats are even seen closing their eyes at night when humans approach them. In that way, they eliminate reflection and blend with the sand. Did you know that the oldest known pet cat existed 9,500 years ago? The thing is, it was thought that Egyptians domesticated the cat, but in 2004, archaeologists discovered a 9,500-year-old cat's remains in Cyprus. This news made me wonder where cats actually come from. Now you can find cats on every continent, except Antarctica. But that wasn't always the case. I mean, how did cats make it across oceans? It all started around 10,000 years ago, in what's now modern-day Turkey. DNA analysis says that this is where cats' wild ancestors originated. Humans kept wild cats because they were useful for rodent control on farms. Agriculture started developing and advancing all over the world, and cats got involved too. As I said, they first reached Cyprus. Imagine you live there and haven't seen a cat in your entire life, and then one day, you meet them. This is what happened globally. Over the next thousand years, cats entered Bulgaria and Romania. Then, in 800 BC, cats made their way to Egypt. In Egypt, things escalated quickly. Cats became an object of worship. From there, the Egyptian cats spread to the world of the Romans and Vikings. They were the ones who brought cats on their ships for pest control. Cats became super popular and traveled the world by ship. They were seen in all of Africa, Europe, and Asia. Eventually, people sailed to the Americas. And of course, cats were in people's hearts and still in their ships. Flash forward today. One third of American homes have at least one cat. Have you ever seen a cat with extra toes? These cats are called polydactyl cats. Extra toes can be found on their front paws and rarely on their hinds. Now that I mentioned that cats were companions to humans on ships, I can also add that polydactyl cats on the ships were considered to be good luck charms. With the help of their extra toes, they were top-notch mouse hunters. Plus, they were thought to climb higher and faster than regular cats. Sailors believed the cats were also able to maintain better balance at sea. There's one polydactyl cat that'll surprise you the most, though. This Canadian polydactyl fella named Jake has 28 toes, seven on each paw. It entered the Guinness World Records book. The name of this cat is Stubbs. He was the mayor of a small town in Alaska for 20 years. He had several uncontested elections. Naturally, he didn't hold any legislative power. 
He only held the right to get the love of locals and tourists. Cat doors are a standard thing today, and even Newton contributed to their popularity. Yep, he was a cat lover too. He was working on his projects at the University of Cambridge, but he was constantly interrupted by his cats scratching at the door. He asked the carpenter to make two holes in the door, one for the mother cat and one for her kittens. They say these holes can still be seen at the university today. Meet Felicette. She became the first feline to ever travel to space. The cat flew nearly 100 miles above the Earth in 1963. There, she also briefly experienced weightlessness. Scientists were trying to study better how lack of gravity would affect animals and what might happen to humans. 15 minutes later, she safely returned to Earth by parachuting down in her little space capsule. What a cat astronaut! Many dogs, monkeys, and chimps went to space in the 1960s, so she didn't become a celeb. Now we can change this by remembering her in Brightside. How about the oldest cat that ever lived? It was 38 years old. Cream Puff was born in August of 1967 and lived until August of 2005. What's even more interesting is that his owner, Jake Perry, actually broke his own record since he had owned the world's oldest cat before Cream Puff too. I'm wondering what Perry was doing to keep his friends safe and sound for that long. I mentioned the oldest cat, but what about extremely wealthy ones? It has millions of dollars. A person named Ben Rhea bequeathed his $12.5 million wealth to his cat Blackie in 1988. It was the last surviving cat of the 15 cats Rhea used to have in his mansion. The millionaire refused to leave it to his family. The majority of his wealth was shared between three cat charities, with the instruction to look after his cat friend. When I talked about sand cats, I wondered about the genetic makeup of our domestic and stray cats. A study revealed that domestic cats share 95.6% of their genetic makeup with tigers. When you trace the behaviors of prey stalking and pouncing of your cats, maybe you wouldn't be that surprised. It's thought that cats go crazy for catnip, but half of the world's felines don't respond to catnip. Scientists still don't know why some cats love this plant, and others don't seem that interested. They discovered that catnip sensitivity is hereditary. If a kitten has one catnip lover parent, there's a one in two chance that it will also like the aromatic herb. Did you know that cats developed a special type of meow to communicate with humans? They generally use this tone to get their way with humans. This sound is irresistible for people because it's a combination of purring and meowing. Interestingly, the frequency of this meow resembles the cry of an infant. That's why our brain tries not to ignore it. Cats probably feel like they have already conquered the whole world. Now they can chill. Maybe that's why they spend 70% of their lives sleeping. This is roughly around 13 to 16 hours a day. They spend the rest of their time being adorable and impish. It was a regular dive in Australia's Great Barrier Reef for underwater photographer Christian Lane. He was taking photos of a group of male manta rays chasing a female one when suddenly he saw something that made him check if his camera strobes had been broken. There was a pink manta ray in his viewfinder. Other underwater beauties of its kind are usually black on top and white underneath. This creature Christian met that day was black on top and pink on the bottom. It turned out the photographer met Inspector Clouseau, the only known pink manta ray in the world living in the waters around Lady Elliot Island. It was named after the famous detective from Pink Panther movies. It was calm, looking at the photographer with its huge eyes. It even seemed that it was smiling at his guest, as Christian remembered in an interview. He managed to take five good photos of Inspector Clouseau in the 30 minutes they spent together. Divers first spotted the unique manta ray in 2015, and it was only seen less than 10 times ever since. First, the scientists thought the secret to this unusual color was in its diet. 
they took a sample of its skin and found out it was actually a result of a genetic mutation that caused it to express melanin differently. Many fish have it, but it usually turns them into albinos. For a regular sea creature, a combo of black, which blends with dark waters and can't be seen from above, and white, which blends with light, is ideal protection. A color mutation with pink in the picture would make other sea animals more vulnerable to predators. But a manta ray weighing as much as a car, and 1.5 times taller than an average basketball player, definitely has nothing to be afraid of. These creatures are born rather big and grow fast in the first few years so they can defend themselves. If you were impressed by a manta ray the shade of bubblegum, meet blue bees. These unique Australian inhabitants have turquoise stripes instead of yellow, which makes them look like flying sapphires. Their thin brown wings look like layers of cellophane with engraved patterns. Another unusual thing about them is their lifestyle. The blue banded bees are singles. They don't move in swarms and don't live in large nests. They prefer settling in small burrows in the soil or crevices in rocks. Blue bees also have a special way of pollination. They sit on the flower, hold it tightly, and shake the whole body to make the flower move quickly and gently. Then the bees stop and collect all the pollen that goes out of the capsule inside the flower. Blue bees work for Australian agriculture, helping with tomatoes, cranberries, eggplants, blueberries, kiwi, and chili peppers. The next unique Australian animal is called the happiest on this planet. A kuwaka never stops smiling and looks like a live teddy bear. It's a nocturnal creature the size of a cat. It has inherited its appearance from its relative, the kangaroo. It also has a pouch, which serves as a home for its offspring for six months. Kuwakas have a diet of grass, shrubs, and leaves. When there isn't enough food, they can use stored fat in their tails as a source of energy. They mostly live on Rottnest Island off the coast of Western Australia. Since there's no predators or traffic there, quokkas have nothing to fear and gladly come into contact with humans. It's against the law to touch them, but no one has banned taking selfies. When you look into the eyes of this cutie pie, the only question is, who on earth would call it the Tasmanian Devil? Well, it wasn't that friendly to the European settlers who came to Tasmania in the early 19th century. The cutie pie greeted them with frightening growls, high-pitched screeches, and unearthly screams. They had no more doubts about how to name it when they saw its red ears and extra white jaws with sharp teeth. But when it doesn't have to defend itself, its meals, or impress a mate, the creature goes back to its cute appearance. And although these guys are the world's largest surviving carnivorous marsupials, they don't hunt their prey, but eat carrion. They're mostly active at night, but also enjoy some time in the sun, especially in the water, splashing around. Female devils have pouches to carry their offspring, and up to four of those fit in at the same time. Our next hero of the day is so unique that the first scientist to describe it thought they were dealing with a hoax. A platypus has a bill and webbed feet like a duck, the tail of a beaver, and the body and fur of an otter. Males also have sharp stingers with venom on the heels of their rear feet, which they can use to defend themselves from enemies. A venomous mammal is something super rare. Platypuses paddle their way through life as they hunt underwater. They can spend up to two minutes submerged to smell some food on the bottom. They don't have any teeth, so they use gravel to chew their lunch. Platypuses don't look that graceful as they move on land, but they can run if they really have to. Echidna is another unique Australian natural hybrid. It has porcupine-like spines, a beak much like that of a bird, a pouch like a wombat's, and lays eggs like a reptile. It feeds its offspring on milk, which just oozes out of the skin in the pouch, and the little one enjoys it. Since it has traits of both a mammal and a reptile, it got its name after a creature from Greek mythology, who was half woman and half snake. Echidnas have pretty strong snouts, which they use to break open logs and termite mounds. 
Their sense of smell is so good, they can smell food and danger. Their limbs are short with shovel-like claws, perfect for digging out food. Echidnas don't like the company of people or other animals, but you can still find them all over Australia, from deserts to rainforests and mountains. They are the country's most widespread native mammal. Echidnas are great swimmers, and they've been spotted crossing rivers. When the weather gets too harsh for them, they burrow into the soil or in hollow logs and burrows left by other animals. This guy looking like a mix of a koala and a kangaroo is a tree kangaroo. It doesn't like the company of others and hides among the trees in tropical rainforests of the mountains in Queensland, New Guinea and nearby islands. They don't build nests and just camp on any branch they find safe. Tree kangaroos are born well prepared for this way of living with shorter hind limbs, strong arms and a long tail for balance to leap among the branches. They have broader feet than their ground relatives and padded soles with sharp curved claws to help them grip during climbing. Tree kangaroos are great long distance jumpers, both between trees and from their tops. All this makes them rather clumsy when they're on the ground. The heavy tail makes them hop funnily, leaning far forward to keep balance. They also have a cool talent for moving their hind limbs independently while walking. They spend around 60% of their lives sleeping. Sounds like a dream. There are at least 12 species of this cutie with fur colors from golden and red to black and dark brown. Did you just hear the chainsaw sound? There must be a leerbird nearby. Those guys have the superpower of copying sounds from their surroundings. With the help of some complex muscles in its syrinx, a leerbird can mimic camera shutters, different tools, other birds, and reportedly even human speech. It takes them up to one year to master this talent, and then they can use it to fool their rivals. Leerbirds mostly hang out close to the ground and rarely fly. They got their name after the shape of their beautiful tail. It's a great mating tool as it does look like a leer when open. The sight of its fin in the water nearly stops your heart. It's the reason you feel so uneasy going for a swim at the beach. That massive, razor-toothed hunter that's made its name known, the Great White Shark. So, if the ultimate terror of the sea is leaving the area, it must be for a good reason. But what could possibly scare the Great White away? A giant Lovecraftian monster that makes even Megalodon look tiny? Nah, not even close. Nothing can clear a portion of the ocean as quickly as orcas can. When their powerful pods come looking for food like seals and squids, even the biggest, scariest sharks leave the area without looking back. It's not known if these whales specifically target great whites, or they're just keeping the competition out of the area. But what marine experts do know is that sharks flee, sometimes not even coming back until the following year. Yeah, makes sense. Orcas are much larger than great whites in size. They have plenty of teeth, and they'll use them to satisfy their merciless desire for meat. Orcas are also highly intelligent and will work as a team to get what they want. Whether that's catching a school of fish, getting seals off the ice, or even chasing down humpback whales. So, if the great white shark itself is scared of the mighty orca, should you be? Well, me personally, I keep my distance from any wild animal. But maybe this will help you sleep better at night. Orcas are known to be picky eaters. Good news for you, human isn't on the menu. They aren't likely to change their diet just because you're in the water today. Oh, by the way, orcas aren't even whales. They're technically the largest species of dolphin. And sharks are also afraid of their relative, the bottlenose dolphin. Even a single bottlenose is too powerful for a shark, but they're tougher when they travel as a pod. Sharks are easily outmaneuvered by the highly agile marine mammals. They use that blunt snout like a battering ram. This basically annoys the shark so much that it just leaves the area. Now, if you think about other top hunters in the animal kingdom, wolves always come to mind. Packs can take over vast territories. 
And since they're at the top of the food chain, they get to pick and choose from a large menu with anything they please. They're highly intelligent, fast, and agile. But probably their biggest advantage? Numbers. If grizzlies or mountain lions try taking advantage of them, the numbers game always works in the wolf's favor, leading to the hunter becoming the hunted. Even without numbers, they dominate and terrify. It's too hard for any other animal to target a lone wolf, so even they are usually left alone. Imagine being able to pounce a wild boar in below freezing temperatures while dressed in orange against a completely snow-covered white environment. Siberian tigers are clearly not playing around. Over 10 feet long and weighing up to 400 pounds, they're the largest of all wild cats. This kitty could easily jump right over your head while carrying double its body weight. The only animal that can really challenge this king of the forest is a large enough brown bear, and it'd be a close call. No wonder the Siberian tiger is the top of the food chain in its part of the globe. As for the top boss in the waters of South America, that would be the green anaconda. Not even jaguars and caiman are safe around the biggest snake in the world. The murky waters of riverbanks camouflage the giant snake perfectly. They go unnoticed, sitting there waiting for something to come have a drink. And then, whoosh, the snake strikes. It uses its sharp curved teeth and 15 feet of pure muscle to hold its lunch in place. Luckily for most animals, after eating their fill, anacondas can go weeks or even months without worrying about their next meal. But the world's biggest snake isn't the most dangerous. That title belongs to the black mamba. Lions, spotted hyenas, giraffes, and even elephants will avoid the mamba at all costs. They all know one bite can stop them very quickly. Growing up to 14 feet, it's the second longest venomous snake in the world after the king cobra. The African black mamba does hold the top spot as the world's fastest snake. It slithers along going 12 miles per hour. That's about where most treadmills max out. Not top dog, but worth a mention, is the green anaconda's neighbor, the electric eel. Very few animals are willing to take on such a highly charged creature. Electric eels have around 6,000 special cells that can produce up to 800 volts of electricity. That's more than six times the standard U.S. wall socket. That's enough to knock a horse off its feet and to power holiday lights. In 2019, a Tennessee aquarium hooked some tree lights up to their eel tank. Every time the eel shot the water, the trees lit up. Now, it's been said that the electric eel can recycle its volts in a process called revolting. Nah, I made that up. One more truthful eel fact to knock you off your feet. Electric eels are air breathers. They have to surface about every 10 minutes to fill their mouth with air. Yep, their single lung is in their mouth. Does the king of the jungle reign unchallenged? In books and movies, sure. In real life, eh, not so much. For one, their home is on the African plains, not the jungle. A whole assortment of contenders, like hyenas, leopards, and crocodiles, are always trying to take the king's crown. Even zebras and giraffes can stop the big cats with a quick kick if they're cornered. If we go by bite force, the African Nile crocodile has the biggest that humanity has ever measured. Its jaws are five times more powerful than that of a lion's. Now earlier, with the water critters, all you had to do was avoid the water. Good luck avoiding a lion! They can run 50 miles per hour, jump the length of a school bus, and climb trees. The lion's biggest challenger for the apex role is the African wild dog. These two are constantly going at it because they hunt for the same food in the same area. Where there's a big pride of lions, the dogs have no choice but to flee. But they've got one thing against the cats. Endurance. Lions might reach incredible speeds, but that's only in short bursts. It takes too much energy to carry 400-plus pounds of muscle over long distances while going as fast as you can. African wild dogs, though, have long, slender legs and big lungs for their body size. Meaning, they can run fast and keep it up for miles. 
That's how they hunt. Their lunch just gets tired of running. There's one animal brave enough to take on the king if the cat gets too curious. The hippo. They may seem cute and squishy. But hippos are one of the most dangerous animals on the planet. Based on statistics, you should fear them way more than great white sharks. And there's nothing squishy about them. Hippos are pure muscle and weigh as much as a car. Their pointy canine teeth can grow longer than your forearm. These guys aren't afraid of anything. Even lions and crocodiles prefer to keep their distance. Their name means water horse. And they do spend up to 16 hours a day submerged. Funny thing is, hippos can't really swim. If you see one swimming, it's actually pushing itself off the lake or river bottom. It can still be even the best Olympic swimmer speed, so watch out! Yep, move aside, Leo! Hippos are the true apex animal of Africa. But I wouldn't get close enough to give them the award. As for the ruler of the forest, make way for the grizzly bear. Weighing over half a ton, you'd be mistaken thinking these large fluff balls are slow and bumbling. Being able to maintain a speed of 25 miles per hour for long stretches is too easy for the behemoth brown bear. Uphill, downhill, and on every terrain, they're the off-road SUV of the animal world. Without having any natural enemies, this bear is at the top of its local food chain. Good thing they sleep for a third of the year. Just hope you don't run into a grizzly, um, ever. But especially right before it's about to go into hibernation. They spend the autumn months fattening up for winter. And they're even hungrier than usual. Now, being the largest bird of prey in North America, it's no wonder the golden eagle is found all over the continent in woodlands and mountain ranges. Their wingspan is nearly 8 feet. And they don't call it eagle vision for nothing. These birds can spot a rabbit from 3 miles up in the air. It'd be like you seeing an ant while standing on top of a 10-story building. Golden eagles can also make quick dives from a great height. During these dives, they can reach speeds up to 200 miles per hour, as fast as a flying arrow. I have news for you. Rats are ticklish. Well, I thought it was news. Anyway, they have a so-called laugh center in their midbrain and it activates when someone tickles the animals or when they engage in some fun and playful activities. Scientists discovered this in 2016 after tickling the rodents on their bellies and listening to their squeaky giggles. Now, hummingbirds are the only birds we know about that can fly backward. They mostly do it when they want to move away from flowers. And here's an animal that can't go backward, a kangaroo. They can hop around and cross great distances but the structure of their strong rear feet and big tails prevent them from walking backwards. Narwhals are those weird creatures that look like some sort of sea unicorns. That horn on their head is not a tusk. It's a giant tooth that sticks out through the upper lip of male narwhals. This tooth is probably one of the tools that plays a role in attracting ladies. Now, flamingos are not actually pink. They're born gray, but throughout their life, they eat lots of algae and other foods that contain a red-orange pigment we know as beta-carotene, like in carrots. This pigment gets broken down and ends up in their skin and feathers, which is what makes them pink. They need to eat a lot of such food to stay like that, though. If we humans wanted to change our skin color, we wouldn't be able to eat enough food rich in beta-carotene to really turn pink, or in our case, maybe even orange. Sloths are really slow. All the jokes and memes about them are true, but they're also very skilled swimmers, and they move in the water around three to four times quicker than on land. They can do breaststroke just like people, and it's an important skill for them to have because they're tropical animals that mostly live in jungles, and those areas are often flooded. Tigers are the biggest members of the feline family, yup, even bigger than lions. And no tiger has the same set of stripes. Their coat is actually a camouflage that comes in handy when they need to find a good spot where their prey won't see them. Interestingly, their skin is striped too, not just the coat. Their stripes are as unique as our fingerprints.
Now, even though they look kind of funny and innocent, you wouldn't want to bother a platypus. These wild animals are some of the few mammal species that can poison you. They have spurs on the tips of their back feet that can release venom. It's not potent enough to pose a life threat, but the sting can still be very painful and can cause swelling and other issues. When a ladybug needs to defend itself against potential predators, it starts bleeding from its knees. Now, it's not actual blood coming out of its joints. It's a certain chemical that smells bad and, therefore, repels predators. They have another mechanism that helps them survive in the harsh animal kingdom – their specific color. Predators really don't like the combinations of bright colors, such as red, orange, and black, because they know that creatures colored this way can taste awful. Roosters can get extremely noisy in the morning, but they don't go deaf because they don't even hear how loud their crowing can be. What keeps them safe is special built-in noise protection plugs. Hens have the same system that reduces the risk of hearing loss, too. Not only do they have this protection, but they can also regrow cochlear hair ears if they get damaged in only a couple of days. Owls don't have eyeballs. They have something that's more like eye tubes, and they can't move them back and forth like we do with our eyeballs, which is why these birds have incredibly flexible necks. They're able to rotate their heads 270 degrees. For comparison, humans can only manage 180. That's why owls have a specific system of blood vessels in their heads. It delivers fresh blood to the brain if the bird turns its head too quickly and cuts off circulation. Just keep swimming. <laughs> you may remember how Dory the Blue Tang sang this in Finding Nemo. Dory wasn't a shark, but that's a message some shark species need to take literally. Mako sharks, great whites, whale sharks, and some other kinds need to keep swimming. Otherwise, they'll stop breathing. We use our lungs for breathing, and some sharks use a method called buccal pumping. This means they swim with their mouths open. That way, they allow water to flow through their gills and thus extract oxygen. The most dangerous animal on our planet isn't a bear, a shark, or some toothy tiger. It's something way smaller – the mosquito. Not only is it extremely irritating, but it also transfers serious diseases such as yellow fever, malaria, or dengue fever. Annually, hundreds of thousands of people don't survive the battle with those diseases. Mosquitoes also outnumber every other creature across the globe, apart from termites and ants. Grizzly bears are incredibly strong animals with a bite powerful enough to crush a bowling ball. That's why you won't see them allowed in bowling alleys. Despite that, they're mostly light eaters. They're strong enough to make a meal out of whatever they come across, including a bison, moose, or elk. But they still like to munch on their fruits, nuts, berries and even a small unfortunate mouse that gets lost and ends up in the predator's mouth. The inland taipan is the most venomous snake on the planet. We know it as the western taipan. It lives in Australia. Just one bite has enough venom to turn out fatal for at least 100 fully grown humans. And it can also do the job within only half an hour if you don't have anything to treat the bite right away. They say these snakes are mostly shy and they mind their own business. But, like other animals, they will attack if they feel threatened or provoked. There's a kind of turtle that can stay alive for months under the ice by breathing through its behind. When it gets colder, some animals can't find safe places to stay, so they must survive harsh winter conditions wherever they are. And while bees get cozy in their nests and bears sleep in caves, painted turtles stay in their ponds that freeze over. Since the ice limits their access to air, they extract oxygen directly from the water and breathe through their behinds. Yes, that would be handy. It's well known that ravens are incredibly intelligent animals. They're excellent at solving problems, but it seems they also have impressive social intelligence. They're very in tune with their feelings as well as the emotions of their mates. If one raven in the group feels pessimistic, it's likely to bring the others down too. A real buzzkill. When they see a bird that doesn't like certain food and expresses it in a very vivid way, they lose interest in their own food as well. The pistol shrimp is one of the loudest animals in the world, 
even though it's tiny, only about three quarters of an inch long. When it senses food, it opens its large claw that can grow as long as half its body length and lets some water in. Then it snaps the claw shut extremely fast, which shoots out a very strong jet of bubbles. These bubbles can stun or even finish the prey the shrimp is trying to catch. And when the bubbles pop, it produces a snapping sound, louder than anyone would expect. Crocodiles are even scarier than we thought, because many of them can gallop like horses. They probably inherited this ability from their ancient ancestors, who were as small as cats, had long legs, and could run at speeds of about 11 miles per hour. Smaller crocodiles probably gallop when something's after them. But caimans and alligators obviously don't need to use this skill. It's you who's more likely to gallop away when you see them. Well, you've run out of cat food, so you jump in the car, and 15 minutes later, as you rush in, you find Shadow snacking on your laptop cord. Luna and Bella are playing with toilet paper roll. It's all over the house. Milo is knocking your cat figurines collection off the shelf, and Captain Snuggles purrs and smiles at you. Ah, oh, You must have gone crazy! Well, yeah, with five cats, what were you thinking? Hey, no worries! Cats can physically make something that looks like a smile with their mouth and jaws. The corners of their lips pull up, and you can even see the teeth in that grin. Now, they don't do it in response to your funny, funny joke or to express happiness, though. Cats smile when they smell something interesting or unpleasant in the air. They have an extra receptor that lets them sense things humans can't. It could be pheromones other cats leave behind to mark their territory. They can also do it near the food bowl to check the air and see if the food is safe to eat. A cat traps the invisible particles in the air with its tongue and moves them to the roof of its mouth to be analyzed by that extrasensory receptor. It curls its lips, tilts the head, and squints its eyes. Together, all of it looks like a feline smile. Some cats even have a permanent smile because of the shape of their mouth. In that case, the smile has no secret meaning at all. Cats have other ways than a smile to express happiness and affection physically. One of them is known as slow blinking, or a cat kiss. The real feline equivalent of smiling is narrowing their eyes and giving you a half-closed stare. In the cat world, this is the highest form of trust. If they are ready to close their eyes in your presence, it means they know you are absolutely no threat to them. When they do it, they expect you to smile back at them, their way, to show them you feel the same. This is a great bonding idea. You can also tell the kitty is happy when the ears are pointing straight up and the tail is wiggling a bit from base to tip. The fur is smooth and lies flat. If it's purring and showing you its tummy, it must be really happy and trusts you a lot. The stomach is their most vulnerable spot. Cat's tear ducts can produce real tears, but they never cry emotionally. They can do it because of an allergy, clogged tear ducts, debris in their eyes, or other eyesight-related issues. If you started using a new carpet cleaner or detergent and your kitty tears up, the reason could be the chemicals and allergens it spreads. Smart kitties can produce crying-like sounds when they don't get enough of your attention. They figure out the owner can't stand those sounds and will pet them immediately. To prevent it, schedule playtime with your kitty every day, but only do it when it's quiet. Otherwise, it will cry again and again. When a cat is really feeling down, it loses appetite and interest in its favorite toys, hides from you, claws the furniture, or screams, no tears involved. Even with a bowl full of water, Captain Snuggles can never resist the drip, drip, drip sound of the tap. Cats inherited their love for running water from their ancestors. In the wild, standing water is more likely to have something harmful in it. Plus, even with their great night vision, cats can hardly see standing water. They find a drinking source thanks to their excellent hearing. If you try putting them by the bowl, they might feel vulnerable sitting with their backs to other cats and the rest of the room. And whiskers brushing against the rim of the bowl isn't the best feeling. Tap water feels cooler, cleaner, and safer. Plus, it's so much fun to play with. If you don't share the enthusiasm, get your kitty a pet fountain. Love bites are one of the cat ways of showing you how much they adore you. Those little nips that don't break your skin remind them of those times their cat mama would nibble them while grooming. If you've been petting the kitty for a while and it starts swishing its tail or staring tensely too, love bites could be the enough signal. Cats have sensitive hair follicles, and too much pressure on those causes discomfort. 
Kitties start chewing on electrical cords out of curiosity. Once they try it and it feels good, they'll do it again and again. You can spray the cords with citrus scent or bitter apple or wrap them in a rubber cord protector to stop them from this dangerous habit. If your older cat who's never done it before starts chewing on cords, it might be a dental problem. Now, cats freak out when they see a cucumber because it looks too much like their longtime enemy, snakes. They are naturally programmed to jump up in the air to protect themselves from a bite. Anything that looks similar, from toys to eggplants, causes a similar reaction. So never show them things like that for fun. It can mess up their mental health. Your kitty likes to drink out of the toilet because it believes the water in there is more yummy. Go figure. They aren't big fans of the water that's been sitting in their bowl all day and warmed up to room temperature. When you flush, you let the new water in that's cooler and has more oxygen. Cats also find swirling water entertaining and can't resist the curiosity to taste it afterwards. The smartest of them have even learned to flush the toilet to put on that show. Cats love messing with toilet paper because it activates their natural hunter instinct. They need to exercise it and can't resist something fluttering in the air. When the paper unrolls, it becomes even more fun for them and they can't stop. Now, if that bothers you a lot, you gotta keep the bathroom door closed or put a cat guard on the toilet paper roll. If you start petting your cat and it purrs and drools in response to it, it's absolutely content, relaxed, and loving you. Kitties rub on their mommy's tummy before they get milk. When they grow up, petting reminds them of those good old times and they might drool in anticipation of a milk meal. If the drooling goes on for too long and isn't caused by petting, the kitty might be sick. Cats often knock things off tables and bookshelves to let out their natural hunter and explorer drive. The only way they can test a new object is patting, swatting, and knocking it down with their paws. Things that roll after falling make them playful. Once a cat notices you never ignore the sound of a falling something, they might start dropping things on purpose to get your attention. Cats are obsessed with yarn because it's another perfect way to express their wildest instincts. When their wild relatives are after prey, it looks like they're playing with it. They do it until they feel it's weak enough. Felines love stretching for the same reason as humans. It's a good way to increase blood flow, and they feel like new after it. Their wild ancestors use stretching as a warning sign to prey and other predators. Cats can stay still for a long time, and a good stretch of all their muscles is what they need to jump back into action. If a kitty climbs on your lap, kneads on it, and then turns its rear end directly into your face, it's trying to tell you how much it loves you. Gee, thanks. When cats meet, one of them holds up its tail, and everyone else is welcome to come up and rub against it. They sniff each other's rear ends because there are scent glands that can tell them a lot right there. Once your kitty shows you that curious spot, rub it. It wants to share its scent with you and officially make you part of its group. In a world run by cats, there would be no closed doors. Their natural curiosity always makes them dream of getting on the other side to see what smells so good or what sounds so exciting. Cats see the entire home as their territory. When you limit the access to a part of their territory, they get angry. Plus, they know there will be more human staff out there to play with them and possibly more food sources. Felines like to jump up on the table right onto the papers you're working on or a book you're reading to get your attention. They don't go to school or have jobs. They notice you mostly move around and go after this opportunity to catch you still. It's also a way for your kitty to mark its territory and claim you. If that's becoming a problem, buy a cat treat and put it right next to your desk. This way, you'll be able to pet the cat and work at the same time. Call it multi-kitty tasking. It turns out, starfish don't have a head. They are the head. When you first look at a starfish, you think it's got five arms. Scientists have always been curious about why starfish look like this, and in particular, where their heads are. Most animals, including us, have bodies that are bilaterally symmetrical, meaning you can split them down the middle and get two matching sides. But starfish, along with sand dollars and sea anemones, are different. They're radially symmetrical, meaning their bodies have identical parts spread out from the center. Starfish, or sea stars, are special because they have this five-way symmetry, and you can divide them into five equal parts. To make this discovery, scientists used a technique called RNA tomography, which helps study genes. They focused on the genes controlling the outer layer, including the nervous system. 
Surprisingly, the genes associated with the head were active in the starfish's head and its arms. Yet, genes linked to the body trunk were hardly active. This suggests that starfish have a unique separation between their head and body. The study sparked new questions about how these creatures evolved and what their ancestors with trunks might have been like based on their fossil records. It also showed that genes active in the head of an acorn worm were also active in a starfish's skin, covering its entire body. These genes are the most active at the center of each arm, changing towards the arm's end to resemble genes found in the rear of other animals. Starfish lack genes for a torso. All this challenges traditional views on starfish anatomy. There's a rumor about Paul McCartney recording an ultrasonic whistle for his Shetland sheepdog at the end of the Beatles song, A Day in the Life. Dogs can hear ultrasonic sounds since their hearing ability is incredible. To move just one of their ears, dogs need to involve 18 muscles. It allows them to swiftly locate the origin of sounds, and it's another skill where they outshine us. Their awesome ears sometimes shadow their noses. Dogs' sense of smell is up to 100,000 times more acute than that of humans. While humans have around 5 million scent receptors, a bloodhound boasts up to 300 million. Another study proves that dogs and bottlenose dolphins may share a fascinating similarity with humans. They call out the names of loved ones when they become separated. This makes them the first non-human animals to do so. The research has uncovered that dolphins copy one another's signature whistles when they're separated from close pals. In the Sarasota Dolphin Research Program recordings, pairs of dolphins were held in separate nets, but they could still communicate with each other. Turns out, some of their chit-chats were mimicking the unique whistles of their dolphin buddies. Next up, we have flamingos with their peculiar dining habits. You often see them feeding with their heads positioned upside down. This distinctive behavior is linked to the anatomy of their mouths and the mechanics of maneuvering their long, elegant necks into the water. These birds are skilled filter feeders, employing their tongues as effective sieves to capture food. When a flamingo lowers its neck beneath the water, it positions its mouth essentially upside down. Then the bird closes its mouth and skillfully propels water through comb-like extensions on its beak. It also utilizes its tongue to expel the water while retaining all the gathered food. If you've watched the movie My Octopus Teacher on Netflix, you might already know that octopuses can bond with humans. But this time, we'll only focus on the anatomy of this creature. Octopuses have three hearts. One heart pumps blood throughout the body, and the other two tag teams send that blood to the animal's gills. Octopuses also have nine brains. Each of their eight tentacles has its very own mini-brain. These mini-brains allow each tentacle to move independently at lightning speed. There's a ninth brain in the mix, and this one oversees the entire octo-nervous system. Opossums are intelligent, in a way, too. They're known for pretending to pass away when their life is threatened. When they face predators, opossums attempt to intimidate their foes by showing their teeth, hissing, and growling. Yet, when these tactics fall short, opossums resort to shutting their eyes, collapsing onto their side and pretending to have passed away. To look more convincing, an opossum might drool, let its tongue hang out, and even excrete waste to enhance the illusion of a sudden demise. Remarkably, opossums can uphold this state for several hours, waiting until they're confident that the threat is gone. Monkeys can be loud when calling one another but a howler monkey's shout can travel approximately three miles in specific situations. Males are usually louder than females. The thing is, the sound is created by pulling air through a space in an enlarged bone in the animal's throat. This bone is larger in males compared to females, and that's why males sound louder. Polar bears have black skin beneath all that fur. Their fluffy white coat is actually translucent. It only seems white because it bounces back visible light. The skin itself is jet black. These creatures are also impressive when it comes to swimming. They can hit speeds of up to 6 miles per hour in the water, which is pretty fast for such big creatures. They can swim for miles and keep going for hours. 
Their big paws are designed for swimming. They use them to paddle through the water while their back legs stay straight and act like a rudder, helping them steer. Since we visited polar bears, we might as well add a romantic fact about penguins here. Male Gentoo and Adelie penguins put themselves out there with proposals. They offer their potential mates precious pebbles, essential for building nests in the harsh Antarctic landscape. If the lady penguin accepts the pebble, they're in it for life, bonded and ready to mate. Another study has found that our adorable house cats share more than 95% of their genetic makeup with tigers. These little furballs also mimic many behaviors of their wild relatives, like marking territory with scents and the classic, stalking and pouncing during playtime. Biologically though, a cat's brain is kind of similar to a human's. We share identical emotional regions in our brains. Cats can also make up to a hundred different sounds. Owls have eye tubes or cylinders. Their rod-shaped eyes don't do the eyeball moving. Our eyes can move in almost all directions. Owls have to make a full body or full head turn to look around, all because of night vision. To master the art of seeing in the dark, they need large corneas that can scoop up every bit of light. Most nighttime critters, like slow lorises or tarsiers, have enormous eyes to get the job done. But owls have small skulls on their agenda, so those big eyes couldn't swell out. Cockroaches are notorious for their survival skills, and a key reason is their unique brain structure. They have two brains, one in their head and a more basic one near their abdomen. They're so hard to get because these critters are incredibly quick to react. They have tiny hairs on their rear end that can feel the slightest breeze. When these hairs twitch, the cockroach doesn't waste time. It instantly switches to escape mode. Research shows that a cockroach can react in just 1 20th of a second. So by the time we turn on the light or grab something to target it, the cockroach is already speeding off. Cats can have dreams. Sometimes you can see your cat's whiskers twitching or its legs kicking while it's sleeping. This doesn't necessarily mean your pet is having a nightmare. We can look at human sleep to get a clue about what's happening with our feline friends. During REM sleep, our brains get super active, almost like when we're awake. That's also the prime time for dreaming. REM sleep is named this way because of the quick movements the eyes make under the eyelids. But while our eyes might be moving, the rest of our body stays still. The focus is on what's going on in our minds. This is true for cats too. Besides an occasional twitch, Cats usually don't move much when they're asleep. Take a look at these animals. There's a deer, a dolphin, a squirrel, and a dinosaur? You've already figured out. I'm about to ask you what they all have in common, right? The boring answer is they've all lived on this planet at a certain point in time. Blah, blah, blah. Sure. What's even more surprising about their common features is their coloration. On that note, let me tell you about Abbott Thayer and his amazing theories on animal coloration. He was a portrait painter extraordinaire, but he also had a thing for the colors of the natural world. He came up with some pretty cool ideas about how animals can stay hidden from predators or prey, and they're still relevant today. One of his most famous theories is called countershading. Basically, animals are painted by nature so that the parts that get the most light from the sky are the darkest, and vice versa. It's like they're wearing the perfect outfit to match their environment. And let me tell you, this technique is not just for fashion-savvy animals. It's also used by ships to avoid detection. Thayer and his friend even got a patent for it. Thayer also came up with the idea of background blending which is when an animal or object is painted to match the colors of its surroundings. Think of it as a natural camouflage suit. Thayer didn't stop there, though. He also proposed a theory on something called disruptive or dazzle camouflage. This is when an object is painted with a crazy pattern to make it harder to judge its distance or speed. It's like when you're trying to hit a piñata that's moving all over the place and you can't quite get your timing right. 
Think about it. If you're a shark swimming beneath the surface of the ocean and you look up, you're going to see the bright sky and the lighter colored ocean surface. If you're a prey animal swimming on the surface, your lighter belly will blend in with the bright sky, while your darker back will blend in with the deeper water. It's not just aquatic animals that use countershading to their advantage. Land animals like deer and rabbits have lighter bellies and darker backs, which helps them blend in with the dappled light of the forest floor. And let's not forget about birds. Many birds have countershading on their feathers, which helps them blend in with the sky when seen from below and the ground when seen from above. Some creatures out there have a way of warning others that they're not to be messed with. Yeah, it's called aposematism, a fancy word for using bright colors or markings to let predators know that they're toxic or just downright unappetizing. Take the skunk, for example. That broad white stripe on its back is like a neon sign that says, don't get too close or else you'll regret it. And those yellow-banded poison dart frogs? They're walking billboards for their own poison with their bright and graphic colors, letting everyone know that they're not to be fooled with. Even wasps use the power of bright colors to signal to potential threats that they're packing a sting. And you know those cute little ladybugs? The brighter they are, the more toxic they can be. Who knew that something so adorable could be so deadly? It turns out that white, yellow, red, and black are the most effective warning colors in the animal kingdom. Just like how traffic signs caution drivers, these bright markings are nature's way of saying, watch out, buddy! If you ever come across a critter with some serious bling, just remember, they're not trying to be fashionable. But how come some animals have evolved to use bright colors and others didn't? It's a question that's been baffling scientists for a long time. Thankfully, one theory coming from a team of researchers at the University of Arizona has uncovered some interesting insights into this colorful mystery. It turns out that the function of an animal's vibrant coloring is strongly linked to the activity patterns of its evolutionary ancestors. So species that use their bright colors to attract mates are usually descended from ancestors that were active during the day. Meanwhile, those that use their colors to ward off predators usually had ancestors that were active at night. It seems that animals have evolved to use their colors in the most advantageous way possible. Now, you may be wondering how vivid coloration even came to be in the first place. Well, it seems that early in their evolution, most species started out pretty plain and drab. But over time, bright colors evolved across many different lineages because they helped animals survive and reproduce. But not all bright colors are created equal. The researchers found that vividly colored lizards and birds usually use their coloring as a mating signal to attract partners while colorful amphibians and snakes often wear their colors as a warning sign for predators. And get this, many of these amphibians and snakes are diurnal now or active during the day, but their ancestors were actually nocturnal, active at night. So, there's no clear connection between warning colors and present-day activity patterns. Mother Nature sure is creative when it comes to helping animals adapt and survive in the wild. But there are some creatures out there that could take the award for the weirdest animals any day. Have you ever stopped to think about what it would be like if we could see through all the layers that protect our internal organs? Because that's exactly what has happened with the glass frog. Imagine you're strolling through the lush rainforest of Central and South America, and you come across a tiny little frog perched on a leaf. From above, it looks like your average run-of-the-mill frog, but if you flip it over, you'll see all its organs on display, heart, intestines, and all. You might be wondering why on earth these frogs have evolved to be see-through. It turns out that their super-thin translucent skin actually helps them blend in with their surroundings too. 
When light shines on them from above, their silhouette becomes all jumbled up and difficult for predators to decipher. And let's face it, when you're surrounded by vibrant greenery, a green topcoat is a perfect camouflage. But what about those transparent legs? Well, they help to blur the outlines of the frog's body, making it even tougher for predators to recognize their shape. I, for one, had no idea penguins also came in yellow. One wildlife photographer stumbled upon a site that left him gobsmacked on a remote island in the southern Atlantic Ocean. He captured some amazing images of a yellow king penguin that had everyone on the beach flapping with excitement. There were 120,000 birds on that beach, and this was the only yellow one there. Scientists are scratching their heads as to how this coloration happened naturally. They think it's a form of leucism, which is basically an animal's inability to produce the proper pigments for its natural coloration. But they're not entirely sure. All king penguins produce small amounts of this yellow pigment naturally, but in this particular bird, it seems to be the only pigment the animal could produce. Talk about standing out from the crowd, am I right? There are some colors, though, you'll rarely find in the animal kingdom. According to some polls, blue is one of, if not the most, popular colors amongst people. Most animals, however, have a tough time sporting this shade. Some animals get their pigment from the food they eat, like how flamingos turn pink from eating shrimp, or how goldfish can alter their golden hue based on their diet. But unfortunately, there's no true blue pigments in plants, so animals can't turn blue through their food. Instead, they have to get creative. For instance, some animals make structures that change the wavelength of light to appear blue. The blue morpho butterfly is a great example of this. Its wing scales are shaped in ridges that cause light to blend in such a way that it reflects only the blue color. If the scales were shaped differently, the butterfly would lose its beautiful blue color. The sky suddenly turns orange. All you can see as you look up are millions of butterflies. You just got lucky to witness the spectacular natural show, the annual migration of monarch butterflies. Every fall, as the days get shorter and the temperatures go down in the northeastern US and Canada, these beautiful creatures leave their summer breeding grounds. They travel up to 3,000 miles to Mexico and never come back. Their perfect overwintering ground is high in the mountains. Millions of monarch butterflies are safe there in the canopy of OML fir trees. Once the winter is over, it's time for them to go back up north. They make a stopover around Texas to mate and lay eggs on milkweed plants. A few days later, these eggs turn into caterpillars that feed on the plant until they transform into grown-up butterflies. Now, it's their turn to continue the journey up north until they find a new breeding ground. This way, generations keep changing en route, and it may take up to five of them to get to the final destination back in Canada. It's a natural mystery how the butterflies traveling south live up to eight months traveling with the air currents. The same species going back completes its life cycle in five to seven weeks. Scientists still don't know why the monarchs migrate and how they find their way. It could be connected with the blooming of milkweed plants, their primary food source. They probably find their way around based on the position of the sun. Humpback whales are real champions when it comes to migration and size among mammals. They cover a distance of up to 5,000 miles following their lunch. In the summer, they move towards the poles to colder waters, where there's plenty of krill and small fish. In the winter, they go south towards the equator's tropical waters. They also travel to mate. They have specific locations where they gather to do it. During the winter breeding season, you can hear male humpback whales sing most likely to attract females or mark their territory. 
they produce a long series of calls and can repeat the same song for several hours. When the song changes, all singers that are currently migrating pick up the new tune. It's amazing how they do it when the distance between groups can be over 3,000 miles. Sea turtles migrate for more sentimental reasons. For hundreds of millions of years, these cute family guys return to the exact place where they were born to lay their eggs. They can cover up to thousands of miles, mostly when the seasons change and the waters are of a comfortable temperature. It could take them years, since some of them travel across the Pacific Ocean between Indonesia and the west coast of the United States and Canada, which is a total of 10,000 miles. But how do they find the exact spot they need if their parents can't just send them a geotag? Scientists have found out that they navigate using the invisible lines of the Earth's magnetic field. It turns out that each part of the coastline has its unique magnetic characteristics. The turtles remember theirs and travel using their internal compass. The magnetic field changes slowly but surely, so they have to shift their nesting sites accordingly. Salmon are born in freshwater streams and move to the ocean as juveniles. Atlantic salmon are brown and spotted as they cover hundreds of miles in fresh water and turn silvery in the ocean, where they travel for up to a thousand miles. Adult salmon stay in the ocean for one to five years, feeding mostly on zooplankton. Then it's time for them to go back to freshwater to spawn. On their way back to the breeding grounds, they have to ascend thousands of feet against the current in mountain streams. This challenging journey is called a salmon run. They set on this run because they know the stream they're headed to will be good for spawning and they'll meet the right species to mate with. Young salmon remember the smell of their home stream and probably even take note of various points along the way to the ocean to find it again. Just like sea turtles, they use the Earth's magnetic field as a compass for their travels. Pacific salmon and most male Atlantic salmon only live for a few weeks after spawning, and some female Atlantic salmon survive and migrate back to the ocean. Caribou, better known as reindeer, are the champs when it comes to migration distance among land mammals. Every spring, they cover a distance of around 400 miles in Alaska, from their winter to their summer feeding grounds. Individuals cover up to 3,000 miles, but herd migration is way more spectacular. The largest herd has at least 260,000 members, and its migration territory covers an area larger than California. Scientists put radio tracker collars on some herd members and take thousands of photos to count them all. This census is organized every three years in good weather conditions to see if the population figures are rising or falling and track their migration patterns. Caribou grow through all this migration trouble to safely raise their newborn young. They reach remote grounds where golden eagles, wolves, and grizzly bears won't bother the youngsters during their first, most vulnerable days. Another good excuse to hit the road up north for them is to save themselves from mosquitoes, which would be a huge problem in warmer months. Plus, they get fresh seasonal foods from the areas they stay in. Their migration helps fertilize the grounds they pass by, which means the tundra should thank them for regenerating and protecting its grasslands. Wildebeest, also known as news, are relatives of antelopes and gazelles. They spend most of their lives in the Serengeti plains of southeastern Africa, grazing on the grassy savannas. Every year at the end of the rainy season, normally in May or June, millions of wildebeest head northwest in search of greener pastures and then back again. This migration is so spectacular that it's considered one of the seven wonders of the natural world. Sadly, not all wildebeest make it to their final destination as they have to cross rivers full of giant crocodiles and pass by hungry lions and other predators. If you look at dragonflies' migration routes, you can call them real globetrotters. 
scientists discovered one such route that spanned from India to the Maldives, Seychelles, Mozambique, Uganda, and back again for at least 8,700 miles. It's the longest insect migration we know of so far. It looks like they set on this epic journey when the temperature reaches a certain mark and the days start to grow longer. They seem to be following the rains as they start during the monsoon season in India and arrive for the rainy season in eastern and southern Africa. One fragile insect cannot complete the whole trip, so it turns into a sort of relay race that includes four generations of dragonflies. Each generation plays its role in the journey. Scientists can't put radio trackers on dragonflies as they do with other animals because the insects are too small. So, to put together the migration route puzzle, they analyzed 21 years of data from volunteer citizen scientists and also wing samples from museums. Each of the samples had a chemical code that could roughly tell where the insect was from. This data helped the scientists understand how far this or that insect traveled as an adult. Elephants are known to have traveled across Africa for centuries. They rely on their herd leader's memory when it comes to recalling the tricky migratory routes. This big elephant boss leads everyone else to sources of ripe food and water when the seasons change. They also migrate to avoid danger, which is mostly represented by humans. Elephants have developed their own communication methods to pass on information about prospective danger. They use chemical secretions, vibrations, gestures, and touch. Recently, many African countries have restored some of the oldest elephant migration routes. These big-eared guys usually avoid dangerous areas for generations, but once they know the route is safe, they start using it again. You decided to go scuba diving for the first time. The water is clear and the sun is shining on the seabed. You take a few selfies and the fish swimming by when suddenly the ocean goes pitch black. You look up and... Oh my, what is that gigantic animal? It's definitely not a shark, not a whale. Is it a turtle? Yep, but fear not, it's not gonna hurt you. If you had lived on this same earth about 72 million years ago, then maybe this could have really happened to you. Scientists have recently found the fossils of a gigantic marine turtle that could have grown as big as 12 feet. If you don't have any idea of how big that is, let's see some examples. That's the average length of a hippopotamus, six golden retrievers, or two Michael Jordans stacked on top of each other. The turtle's scientific name is an homage to that old-school sea monster called Leviathan. Maybe you remember this from old-school history lessons. The Leviathan is supposedly a mythical creature that would swallow entire ships or people that were deemed too greedy by the creature. Can you imagine being swallowed by this humongous sea turtle? No, thank you. The fossils of this gigantic creature began to be excavated between 2016 and 2021, all the way in northeastern Spain. The first fossil was located by a hiker in the Spanish Pyrenees, and it was around 8 inches long. The pelvis of this turtle alone measured around 35 inches. It would definitely be one of the biggest turtles today if it hadn't gone extinct. FYI, the largest living sea turtles today can reach up to 6 feet in length, which is already pretty big. Now, how about a gigantic prehistoric scorpion? I bet most people here are not huge fans of these creatures, especially since they're poisonous. Which is why the thought of a 9-foot long aquatic scorpion might be the stuff of nightmares. Let's just say that if they hadn't gone extinct some 400 million years ago, lakes and rivers would be much more dangerous places for humans today. These gigantic insects were considered to be apex predators in their time hunting everything from fish to other animals, even of their own kind. Yikes, I got goosebumps just imagining these creatures. Should we thank the asteroid that hit our planet now or later on in this video? 
Another prehistoric animal that would shock humans if it were still alive is the so-called megatherium, a gigantic sloth. This huge sloth is believed to have grown up to 20 feet long, and its weight could be up to 8,000 pounds. It was found in the woodlands and grasslands of South America. The creature used to stand on its two feet in order to reach leaves on high branches. These giant sloths had huge claws. They helped them climb trees. I gotta say, I feel uncomfortable imagining these elephant-sized sloths climbing trees. Oh, of course, some dinosaurs will make our super-sized creatures list. But before that, here's a fun fact. Did you know some dinosaurs are still alive today? Scientists have proven that birds are classified as theropod dinosaurs. Such infamous creatures as the T-Rex and Velociraptor belonged to this group. I'm sure you've heard these names even before you watched Jurassic Park. The Velociraptor is that scary dino that breaks into the kitchen. Well, they evolved, gained some feathers, and turned into various species of birds we know today. That means that any bird from chickens to those little blue ones is a direct descendant of dinosaurs. Now, does the name Spinosaurus ring a bell? You can see this huge dinosaur in some museums today. It's fossils, I mean. The Spinosaurus was one of the biggest land predators to walk Earth. Actually, to walk its land and water since scientists believe that this dino was semi-aquatic. It fed mostly on meat, which means humans would be its natural prey if it lived today. This meat-eating dino lived around 90 to 100 million years ago. It was about 60 feet long, 12 feet high, and weighed up to 22 tons. Its head was around the size of eight bowling balls and was shaped like a crocodile's face. Basically, the Spinosaurus was a big African elephant with the face of a crocodile. Just kidding. But that would look funny though, wouldn't it? A much more attractive dino was this guy. It's considered to be the largest dinosaur that has ever lived on our planet. What made it so big was its extremely long neck and very long tail. You wouldn't want to stand behind this creature, believe me. If it decided to swish its tail, you'd get catapulted very far away. This creature lived around 100 million years ago, and its fossils were first found in Argentina around 2012. The dino measured 120 feet from head to tail, which made it almost as big as an American football field in width. Hmm, and have I mentioned it weighed almost as much as a space shuttle? A staggering 75 tons. If it had been a carnivore, it would have probably been the greatest predator. But this big guy was a peaceful herbivore that had such a long neck that it could eat leaves from high trees. Cute, right? We must also talk about the Shastasaurus. As the name suggests, this animal is popularly known as the Mount Shasta lizard. Even though it was a marine reptile and probably never set foot on the mountain itself, this dino was usually around 23 feet long, but there was a specific strand of this species that could get as big as 69 feet long, about the size of the great blue whale. This made it the biggest marine reptile to have ever lived. A fun fact about the Shastasaurus is that scientists believe it didn't even have teeth, which means it could only feed on soft-bodied prey, such as squid, for example. The next animal on our list is the blue whale. Believe it or not, the biggest living animal on Earth actually started small. These days, the average mature blue whale can reach up to 100 feet in length and weigh up to 200 tons. That's more or less the weight of 40 elephants put together, or 30 Tyrannosaurus rexes, or 2,670 average-sized people. Blue whales have to eat up to 50 million calories per day to support that body. That's the equivalent of 30,000 Big Macs, just FYI. But blue whales weren't always this big. 
they actually evolved from a four-legged mammal that lived on Earth around 48 million years ago. Their ancestor was called Pachycetus, and it was only six feet long. Here's a fun fact. To be able to live in the water as one does today, the blue whale had to go through some intense adaptations. A blue whale can replace up to 80 to 90% of oxygen in its lungs each time it takes a breath. A human replaces only up to 15% for comparison. It allows these animals to dive for up to one hour at a time, down to a staggering depth of 330 feet. Elephants were bound to make the list. Elephants are currently the largest land animals on Earth. They can grow to be about 13 feet tall and weigh up to 7 tons. That's pretty small if we compare it to the other animals that once lived on Earth, right? But if we placed a 6 foot tall human next to an elephant, we'll see it's not at all that small. African elephants are bigger than their close relatives, Asian elephants, and they have a similar lifespan to humans, up to 70 years. Pokemon might have made us collectively wish that salamanders were real-life dragons. Although, they're not. They can still be pretty cool, though. There's a giant species of salamander that is known to be the largest living amphibian. They can grow to be as long as a regular-sized human, reaching up to 6 feet. I bet that wouldn't be a pleasant underwater encounter. There are sharks that glow in the dark. For example, swell sharks. They live in the dark ocean depths, almost 1,700 feet under the surface. No one knows why exactly, but they emit a fluorescent glow only other swell sharks can see. Scientists detected the glow because they used filters that blocked out yellow light. They think that could be the way for these big fish to communicate with their buddies. This glow helps sharks fight infections on a microbial level. Cowbirds have secret passwords they use to recognize each other. They're a specific type of parasite bird since they lay their eggs in other bird species' nests. The young cowbirds have an inner mechanism where they recognize their species singing, like some sort of secret password only they know. That's how they manage to find others of their kind. A grizzly bear has an incredibly strong bite. It may look cute, but if you're close to this big guy, you better stay out of reach of its sharp claws and especially its mouth. Its bite force is more than 8 million pascals, which means it can crush a bowling ball. Some animals have skin-deep stripes and others have more superficial ones. Tigers are in the first group. Not only is their fur striped, but their skin is as well. It's the same with some other furry big cats, like snow leopards. Giraffes and zebras are in the second group, since they have patterns only on their coats. Speaking of zebras, do you think they're black with white stripes or white with black stripes? At first, it really looks like the second option is correct. Their black stripes mostly end towards the inside of their legs and on their bellies, and the rest of it is white. But that's not true. Surprisingly, they're black with white stripes. All of their fur, both white and black, grows from follicles that have something called melanocyte cells. All animals have these cells. They produce a pigment called melanin, and it gives color to their hair and skin. When it comes to zebras, chemical messengers tell which melanocytes send pigment to which area of fur. That's why zebras have a black and white pattern. But white is not actually its own pigment. It's an absence of melanin. So black is their default color. Koalas have fingerprints that are so close to ours that they could even taint crime scenes. It doesn't seem like they have a lot in common with humans, but take a closer look at their hands. They have distinctive loops and arches. So if any koalas want to do something illegal, it would be a good idea for them to wear gloves. Ghost crabs growl when they're around creatures they don't like or find threatening. They do it using teeth in their stomachs. First. They'll let you know they'll defend themselves if you try anything by showing you their claws. If that doesn't work, they'll go for fearsome growling noises like dogs. But the noise is coming from rubbing their three elongated hard teeth inside their stomach. Ghost crabs produce the same noise when they're grinding up food. Speaking of teeth, did you know narwhal tusks are actually some sort of an inside-out tooth? 
Unlike the majority of other whales, narwhals are the ones that come with a large tusk or tooth that grows from the inside of their jaw. It has up to 10 million nerve endings and they're unprotected, which means its tusk is very sensitive to any type of contact. It's almost like a piece of skin because tusks usually don't have many nerve endings. Up to 95% of humans are right-handed and it's the same with bottlenose dolphins. There are even more right-handed ones among them than among humans. During one study, scientists found that bottlenose dolphins turn to their left side over 99% of the time, which means they're right-handed. They place their right side and right eye closer to the ocean floor as they go for prey, such as squids, shrimps, or smaller fish. More cool facts from the ocean. Did you know humpback whales use bubbles when they go after their prey? You might think they don't need any special method considering how large they are. But when they're lurking for prey in the open waters, these whales team up and use something called a bubble net technique. While swimming in an upward spiral, they blow bubbles underwater. These bubbles make it difficult for fish to escape. The oldest evidence we have of domesticated cats dates up to 12,000 years ago. Researchers discovered this almost 20 years ago when they were digging through an ancient village in Cyprus. They found cat bones right next to human ones, which suggested they were close even when their lives came to an end. Humans were hunters, so they domesticated dogs first, somewhere up to 29,000 years ago. Dogs helped them catch other animals, but they didn't think they needed cats until they started to settle down and store surplus crops. Mice became frequent guests in grain stores, so cats came in handy in those times. Puffins are quite innovative when they want to scratch their bodies. They can surely be proud of their stunning beaks, but they obviously think it's not enough for scratching. Researchers noticed they tend to spontaneously take a small wooden stick to scratch an itchy spot. There's a special type of ant that only lives in a small part of Manhattan. The Broadway medians at the 63rd and 76th Street is the area these crawling critters decided was the best spot for them. The Manhattan ant looks like it's from Europe, but no European species can actually match it. Hey Potterheads, can you believe there's a thing like chocolate frog? Well, not quite, but it looks like it. New Guinea and Australia weren't always separated. They spent millions of years together until about 12,000 years ago, rising sea levels divided them. Since they were together for so long, some animals and plants still inhabit both areas, including green tree frogs. These frogs have spread really far and wide, and some of them, who live in hot, swampy regions surrounded by plenty of crocodiles, actually look like they're made of chocolate. We all know flamingos for their specific color, but they're not actually pink. They're born gray, and that's how they would stay if it weren't for their diet of blue-green algae and shrimp. These foods have a specific natural dye, which is why flamingo feathers turn pink over time. These little Tasmanian devils grow up and leave their moms. They socialize together, forming bonds that last for the rest of their lives. Not only them, cows also have stronger social ties than we think. They like to socialize, and they make long-lasting friendships. One research even discovered their heart rates significantly increase as a sign of stress when they're separated from their BFFs. Imagine you could simply freeze yourself solid during the cold winter days instead of listening to your teeth chatter and trying to tighten your jacket. That's what frogs can do. Aquatic frogs mostly hibernate underwater and spend most of the winter at the bottom of a pond, lake, or some other body of water. Toads and frogs are generally cold-blooded which means the temperature of their body takes on the temperature of their surroundings. So, frogs can freeze during the winter because of a high concentration of sugar or glucose in their vital organs. Once they unfreeze, they continue as if nothing happened. Octopuses have three hearts and blue blood. They can move at speeds of 25 miles per hour, and they spray ink that not only blurs the predator's visual field, but actually harms them. Also, they have nine brains, the central one and eight smaller brains located in their arms. That's why their arms can open a shellfish while the central brain is busy doing something else. An octopus even tastes with its arms. 
They have cells in their suckers that enable the arms to touch and taste in a way that they detect chemicals marine creatures produce. That way, an octopus can distinguish prey from rocks. Squirrels' teeth never stop growing, but the animals wear them down by gnawing on nuts and other hard foods. The front of the rodent's teeth is actually orange. It's because they're covered in special tough enamel. Bet you're glad you don't have that to deal with. Some bird species don't mind munching on chili peppers. That's because they can't feel the heat. Peppers burn your mouth because they contain a special chemical, capsaicin. But birds don't have the taste buds needed to feel its effects. The rhino's horn is made of hair, or at least the same protein that makes up your hair and nails. This protein is called keratin. Such a horn is kind of unique since other animals have horns with a bony center. The woodpecker can peck the wood 20 times per second. This pace is almost too high for the human eye to notice. How much wood would a woodpecker peck if a woodpecker could peck wood? The number of pecks often reaches a total of 8,000 to 12,000 a day. A starfish does have eyes, one on the end of each of its arms. These eyes are light-sensitive groups of cells. Frogs don't need to drink water. Instead, they have an area known as the drinking patch. It's on their bellies and thighs. They use it to absorb water directly through the skin. Well, that could save some time. Most caterpillar species have around 4,000 muscles in their body, and almost 250 of them are in the head alone. Christmas tree worms are much more beautiful than you can imagine. But even though the pines look awesome, two-thirds of the worm's body is hidden in a calcium carbonite tube. And the point of this is… I don't have one. Narwhals' famous tusks are actually their teeth that are kind of turned inside out. These unicorns of the sea have just two teeth. And in males, one of them grows right through their upper lip. Unlike your teeth, this one is tough inside and sensitive and soft on the outside. The anteater doesn't have teeth, but it's not a problem. This creature has a super long tongue. This tongue helps the animal lap up more than 35,000 termites and ants every day. Well, that's one way to lick hunger. The flea can jump more than 200 times their body length. If humans had such an ability, they would jump as high as the Empire State Building. Woohoo! The red-eyed tree frog's eggs can hatch earlier if they sense their environment isn't safe. Small animals with fast metabolism see in slow-mo. This helps them escape larger creatures. Koalas' fingerprints are very, very similar to the human ones. Sometimes these animals' fingerprints even get confused at crime scenes. Probably in Australia. The hippo's sweat is pink and not exactly sweat. It's a reddish, oily fluid. Its function is to not cool the body, but to moisturize the skin and protect it. This fluid also functions as an antibiotic. So, you get sunburn or cut, you can smear a hippo all over you. Polar bear skin is black, and the hairs of their coat are hollow and almost see-through. These animals have fur growing even on the bottom of their paws. This gives them a better grip on ice and protects against cold. Some species of tarantulas, some of the largest spiders in the world, can live without food for more than two years. I still think they're creepy. Platypuses close their eyes while kissing, uh, I mean swimming. They have special folds of skin covering their ears and eyes. They prevent water from getting inside. These animals' nostrils also have a watertight seal. Emus can't walk backwards, but scientists aren't sure why. These flightless birds are the only ones that have calf muscles. Emus can sprint really fast. They can also travel long distances, but they can't back up. Crocodiles can't move their tongue because it's attached to the mouth roof. It keeps the throat closed and protects the animal's airway. Water snakes, dolphins, whales, alligators, crocodiles, and turtles can drown. It'll happen if they stay underwater for too long. These animals can't breathe in the water. They can just hold their breath for a very long time. Only one species of birds can fly backwards. That's hummingbirds. Hey, go talk to the emu. These tiny birds can also beat their wings up to 80 times per second. 
Despite what elephant shrews look like, these small animals are more closely related to elephants than shrews. Maybe that's why they have their trademark trunk-like noses. Elephant shrews use them to munch on insects. True enough. Cats, as well as other felines, can't taste sweet things. They don't have the taste buds needed for that. Too bad, more for me. Flamingos can only eat with their heads upside down. That's why their lower bill is massive and their upper bill isn't fixed. Such an arrangement is perfect for upside-down feeding. But it's the opposite of what other birds have. It's not easy being pink. Tiger skin is as striped as their fur. That's all I have to say about that. When toucans sleep, they curl into pretty tight balls. These birds can turn their head so that their tail covers their head and the beak rests on the back. So yeah, they have a ball. The ostrich has some of the largest eyes in the animal kingdom. They're more massive than a bird's brain. Each eye is as big as a billiard ball. All clownfish get born male, but in some circumstances, they can turn into females. This change is irreversible. Unlike most fish, when seahorses mate, they do it for life. Even cuter, when the mates travel, they move side by side and often hold on to each other's tails. The male usually gets stuck schlepping the luggage. Termites never sleep. They don't need to recharge their batteries. But they can eat 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, on your house. The sloth needs up to 2 weeks to digest its food. Hey, take your time, no hurry, nothing on the schedule. Dogs' nose prints can be used for their identification. They are similar to human fingerprints and unique for each animal. Owls don't have eyeballs. Instead, they have eye tubes that don't move in the eye sockets. Penguins don't have external ears, but their hearing is especially sharp. Especially when they're on the lookout for polar bears. Shh, let's not tell them. Jellyfish are up to 98% water. That's why when they get washed ashore, their bodies can evaporate into the air after just a few hours. If a traffic jam happens underwater, an alligator will always give way to a manatee. Nice manners. Grizzly bears have such a strong bite that they can crush a bowling ball. So it's smart just to let them win. Giant pandas aren't picky about their sleeping spots. They usually fall asleep wherever they are, in most cases, right on the forest floor. The giant panda's newborn cubs are tiny. They weigh like a small cup of coffee and are smaller than a mouse. The red handfish can walk along the ocean floor with the help of its hands. But of course, they are not hands, but evolved fins. Really. Cats don't usually meow at each other. A study has shown the felines use this way of communication mostly to get attention from us humans. And it works. Sloths can't shiver. It's not that they're too busy digesting that two-week-old meal. Their fur is sometimes covered with algae. And when they get too hot or too cold, their metabolism shuts down. During the hard times, immortal jellyfish transform themselves back into their younger state. Once they reach the stage when they're nothing but a blob of tissue, like me, these creatures start to grow again. And this process can apparently repeat again and again. The closest living relatives of the T-Rex are chickens and ostriches. Don't turn your back. The moray eel has another set of jaws that can extend from his throat. First, the main jaws close around an unlucky sea creature. Then the additional set grabs the eel's future meal with backward-pointing razor-sharp teeth. And after that, the captured animal gets dragged back into the eel's throat. I just lost my appetite. Some species of snails have hairy shells. Thanks to these hairs, snails can better stick to wet surfaces. When humpback whales hunt, they often gather in a group and apply a bubble net tactic to catch their food. The bubbles don't let the schools of fish get away. Snow leopards can't roar like other large felines. It has to do with their less developed vocal cords. But these animals can meow, growl, hiss, and even purr. 
not to drift away from their group while napping. Sea otters hold hands. They can also entangle themselves in giant seaweed for the same purpose. Hey, it kelps. Lions are often called the king of the prairie. I thought it was the king of the jungle. And still, up to 90% of all the hunting in the pride is done by the females. The males are in charge of protecting mm. the territory and the pride members. And they make the delicious potato salad known as Hakuna Matator. Cats are famous for their uncanny ability to move their ears. All because kitties have 32 muscles in each outer ear. Some shark species can glow in the dark. Unfortunately, only other sharks can see this greenish glimmer. You have up to 8,000 taste buds, but your pooch has just a bit over 1,500. The blue jay can imitate other birds. Its favorite is a hawk's call. The blue jay uses it to scare away other birds from its territory. Slow lorries are insanely cute and just as treacherous. They're the only known <laughs> venomous primates. They have a gland in the crook of their inner arm. It secretes toxins that can cause unpleasant consequences in people. The heart of beast has an amazing evasion tactic. To run away from other animals, they move in a zigzag pattern. Bottlenose dolphins have names for one another. Those are specific whistles. Hey, Bob. Hey, Charlie. Hey, Dolly. Hey, boys. And thanks for all the fish. Giraffes have long, and I mean it, black tongues. Scientists suppose this color might protect the tongue from getting sunburned. Well, that's all I got. See ya. Your cat lady friend has asked you to cat sit her loves while she's away for the weekend. You arrive at the house and open the fridge to feed them something healthy, like chicken. You notice a bar of chocolate and decide to give it to them as a treat. Wow, that's a siren! Your friend calls you and yells at you. Turns out she has an alarm system that goes off when there's any danger to her kitties. You should never, ever feed them chocolate. It has some toxic substance in it called theobromine. No worries, human metabolism naturally takes care of it. That's why you can safely eat chocolate. Lots of it. The more the better. Oops, sorry, got carried away. Well, this doesn't work the same way for cats, though. Another dangerous component is caffeine. All sorts of chocolate are dangerous to them. Semi-sweet, milk, and even white chocolate with its low percentage of cocoa. Also, there's chocolate brownies, donuts, cookies, and candies. The worst kinds are dark and baker's quality chocolate because they have more cocoa in them. A tiny square of baking chocolate can do as much harm as 23 wrapped chocolate drops. Chocolate ice cream might not be that dangerous cocoa-wise, but it also has sugar and lactose from the milk, so it's another no-go. Chocolate is also poisonous to dogs, but the hazard depends on their size. Owners of hamsters, rabbits, and birds must all exclude chocolate from their pet's diet, too. Artificial sweetener xylitol is also bad for pets, with no exceptions. It can be found in candy, sugarless gum, toothpaste, baked goods, and many diet foods. It's most dangerous for dogs. You better make sure any foods containing it are out of reach. Now, most cats just love tuna, and it's fine for them to eat the cat food variety of it. Regular canned tuna for humans on a regular basis can deprive them of some important nutrients cats need to be healthy. Don't leave open cans anywhere accessible for your kitty. Liver is safe for felines in small amounts, but too much of it can give them more vitamin A than they can handle. Neither cats nor dogs need onions in any form, powdered, raw, cooked, or dehydrated in their diet. Garlic is five times stronger than onions, so it must be excluded as well. Never give your cat a saucer of milk, a piece of cheese, or other dairy. Most felines can't digest lactose, so it would cause them serious stomach issues. The same is true for dogs. Dairy products can cause food allergies in them. So instead of sharing your ice cream cone on a summer day, give your pup cold water to drink. Grapes and raisins aren't exactly the best treat for your pet. Even a small amount can make them sick. Early symptoms would be sluggishness in dogs and hyperactivity in cats. Caffeine in coffee, tea, and even the beans and the grounds, as well as cola and energy drinks, can be fatal for your fluffy family member. 
It increases heart rate and breathing, makes them restless, and gives them muscle tremors as early symptoms. Fat trimmings off meat and bones, both cooked and uncooked, can give your kitty or doggy some bad digestion issues. Bones are dangerous for both as they can choke on them. They can also become an obstruction in the digestive system, and that's no good. Raw eggs and meat can be the reason of food poisoning in cats because of some sneaky bacteria in them. Raw egg whites also contain a protein that can give your kitty skin and coat problems. Raw fish is also bad. It contains an enzyme that destroys vitamin B, which is super important for felines. When they don't have enough of it, they can have neurological problems. Now, if you like to feed your cat dog food or your dog cat food, stop right there. If either of them tries a bite of the other species' food by accident, it won't be that bad. But on a regular basis, cats need a diet that's richer in proteins and certain vitamins and fatty acids. Dog food doesn't have enough of these nutrients. Dogs need a much more balanced diet than cats, and cat food is too high in fat, calories, and protein for them. It could lead to obesity and seriously upset their tummies. Something as harmless and vitamin-rich as an avocado can give your pup food allergies. The reason for it is that the leaves, seed, and bark, and the fruit of an avocado are all rich in person. Too much of this fatty, acid-like substance can cause less than pleasant stomach issues. Plus, the seed can become an obstruction in the stomach. Avocados are also one of the most dangerous foods for rabbits and are bad for pet birds because of person. Some types of birds are fine with it, and some give them heart damage. So it's better not to play the guessing game and not give them the fruit at all. Persimmons, peaches, and plums are a no-go because they have seeds or pits. Peach and plum pits aren't just a prospective obstruction in the intestines, but also have cyanide in them. It's poisonous for both people and dogs. When yeast dough gets in a cat or dog's stomach, it does its natural thing. It rises. This can stretch the pet's abdomen and give them pain. When you're baking, don't leave the dough where your pet can snack on it. (laughs) Just six raw or roasted macadamia nuts can make your dog real sick. It's even more dangerous when Spot gets a chocolate with macadamia nuts. Well, that's a bad twofer right there. Even if it begs for chips or pretzels, never give it to your pup. Too much salt will make it thirsty and also give them unpleasant stomach issues and depression. For pet birds, salt is even more dangerous. Just one pretzel can upset the fluence balance in them and give them dehydration. Apples, cherries, apricots, and pears, and other fruits with seeds and pits are all dangerous for birds because of cyanide they contain. Without seeds, they're safe to eat. Rabbits are better off without them, too. Tomatoes are perfectly safe for birds, but their stems, vines, and leaves are toxic and must be avoided. High-fat foods, such as butter, oil, fatty meats, and nuts, can give birds, especially Amazon and Quaker parrots, high cholesterol and obesity. Onions and garlic in large amounts cause digestive problems in birds. Mushrooms have the same effect. Hamsters need a diverse diet that must not include processed sugary foods, junk food, tomatoes, and bitter almonds because they're rich in cyanide. Peanuts have too much fat for a hamster, and the salty option can make them dehydrated. They can only handle really small amounts of fruit, and it must always be properly washed as well as vegetables. Fat is bad for your pet fish, so make sure there's no more than 3% of it in the food you get for it, and up to 6% for carnivores. Always keep their dry food in a tightly sealed smaller container. Water ruins it, and when you open a large container a lot, fish food absorbs moisture from the air. In the wild, turtles never miss a chance to eat and can snack on almost anything. They won't find dairy there, and they can't break down lactose. So don't feed them milk, cheese, yogurt, and other dairy products. Don't give them too much raw meat, fish, or chicken, as they get more protein than they need. Processed human foods such as sausage or canned foods, french fries, ketchup are a terrible idea as well. They have too much salt and other preservatives. Also, watch out for fruits, especially if you have an aquatic turtle. 
Rabbits don't need yogurt drops, high-carb treats like muesli, bread, pasta, cookies and crackers, and cereal in their diet. Iceberg lettuce is another no-go because it has a chemical that's dangerous for their health. Potatoes and parsnip with lots of starch are difficult to digest. Peanut butter also gives them a tummy ache. Hamster food, as well as dog or cat food, must never end up in a rabbit's bowl. It has too much of the wrong vitamins and minerals and not enough nutrients the rabbit needs. Ah yes, driving through the countryside. Windows down, music, nice and loud, just another road trip. You see a bunch of cows out the window. One of them really stands out. Literally. The other cows look like black and white hamsters. The Guinness World Record for tallest cow ever goes to this cow named Blossom. This big grass guzzler was six foot four. <laughs> Somebody better buy that cow some basketball shoes. The average cow's only four foot five. Blossom must have felt like a giant. When you're that tall, you don't just hang around in a field eating grass. Blossom was the official greeter for a local resort. Big Jake. And believe me, big is an understatement. This guy got famous for being the world's tallest horse. Checking in at a whopping 6 foot 11, we're gonna need a whole lot of basketball shoes. What a stud, which actually pretty much just means male horse, so... Now what about this little cutie? The world's shortest female horse. Her name is Thumbelina. What a perfect name. And she's only about 1 foot 5. That didn't stop her from going viral, though. Oh, and the shortest male horse is called Bomble. It means bubble in Polish. He's only two feet tall, but his heart is larger than life. So, so cute and shorter than a greyhound. Now, I'm a full-out dog person. Well, regular-sized dog person. Zeus, a Great Dane, was officially the world's tallest dog. Being three foot eight on all fours made you think you were looking at a small horse. Imagine that face waking you up in the morning. And what about taking him out for a walk? You'd have needed a pretty strong leash. According to his owners, he was a gentle giant and was usually laid back, luckily. And Zeus had a really important job. He was a certified therapy dog, spreading his love and joy to all in need. Imagine a dog like that. You wouldn't need to put out a water bowl every day. He could just drink straight out of the tap. Hugging would be on a whole different level, too. How much do you think that guy ate? Would he have even fit on your bed? So many questions. Now, what if you're a cat person? You'd better prepare yourself. Ha! Get it? Anyway, this cool cat over here has been called the world's longest domesticated cat. His name's Baravel, which means clown and he comes from a small town in Italy. He's a gentle giant too, which is good because he's longer than a baseball bat. When they see a photo, people usually think he's been photoshopped. He enjoys basking in the sun by the window, staring out into the backyard. Hunting mice must feel like chasing ants to him. The previous title holders were called Ludo and Stewie, the same breed as Baravel. That's a lot of cat fur on my mom's new sofa. Sheesh. Hopping up next is a rabbit named Darius. His long ears and cute button nose aren't why he's special. A regular rabbit's about 14 inches, but Darius here, just over 50. That's basically a rabbit dog. Darius grew up on a farm in England, and living out in an open field gave him a super chill personality. Feeding him must be tough, though. Darius must be a carrot-eating machine. I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. Enough of the cute stuff. Time for some more exotic animals. Maybe even mythical ones. Myths are just how people explain crazy things. Like the legend of the white-lipped man. That turned out to be just me eating cheesecake. Quick and shifty under the water, able to bring down an entire ship... The Kraken was famous for disappearing ships. That's what the legends say. Probably just a sailor's tale told to scare the new recruits. But researchers may have found its baby brother. The largest ever recorded squid was almost 60 feet long, but the researchers forgot to video it. Huh, no! 
The largest squid ever caught on camera was about 25 feet. That's like an RV. Scientists think there might be larger ones out there, but they're kind of camera shy. The great white shark, frightening ocean animals left and right. She's called the queen of the ocean. She's not one of those kind and gentle queens, oh no. Scientists were able to tag her to study her more. This queen weighs about 3,500 pounds. That's like six motorbikes or 14,000 hot dogs. She was caught in the waters off Nova Scotia by a team of terrified researchers. Good thing sharks only chill in the ocean. Unless, what about an episode of Shark Ninja Warriors? That was the biggest, now the longest. Good guess, but nope, definitely not a snake. But it is as long as half a football field. This animal was discovered in the deep waters off Australia. They found it there, glowing. And get this, scientists say it isn't even a single creature. It just acts like one. It's actually a whole colony, cloning and multiplying until it gets… even bigger? Its technical name… um… This next animal can move on land and water. Don't be fooled by its short scrawny legs. A crocodile can run as fast as a human on land. So if you're running a lap against these sprinters, try to climb up a tree as high as you can. Crocs can't climb trees, but you'd better believe they'll be waiting for you when you get down. They're also the heaviest reptiles in the world. An adult can weigh about the same as two small cars. The largest one in captivity was a saltwater croc in the Philippines. Lolong was his name, and he was 20 feet long. That's like two ping pong tables end to end with a whole bunch of teeth. Slithering up next, another reptile, a beast of a serpent from Malaysia. Some workers were on break at a construction site on a hot day. They noticed something. Was it a large pipe? Well, this time it was a snake. They pulled out the longest python ever captured. It took more than five men to carry it out of the construction site without harming it or themselves. The beast was 26 feet long and weighed around 550 pounds. That's only a bit shorter than a light post. The previous record for the longest snake in captivity was the famous Medusa, also a python. That kind of snake can eat its whole weight for lunch. That's like me eating 280 burgers. I definitely don't want fries with that. Back to the water. Behold! The heaviest blue catfish ever caught! The Andersons bagged this guy in Virginia back in 2011, and they've been bragging about it ever since. Weighing in at a whopping 143 pounds, that's like fishing a washing machine out of the lake while standing on a small boat. That's why it took both father and son to drag it on deck. Honorable mention goes to the largest living cat in the world. No, it's not a lion or a tiger, but a little bit of both. It's a liger. Ligers don't exist out in nature, since lions and tigers live in totally different parts of the world. Than wildlife parks, it's been done. Hercules holds this particular record. At over 900 pounds, he's the biggest carnivore mammal in the whole world. He's got his length from his mom, a tiger, and his weight from his dad, a lion called Arthur. Want to know what it's called when the mom is a lion and the dad's a tiger? A tigan. They're way less common than ligers, but they're just as bizarre. That sort of sounds like the ancient Greek mythical creature, the chimera. It was part lion, part goat, part snake, and some stories say it even had bat wings. Oh, and it breathed fire, too. You'd need to bring in a whole bunch of Spartan firefighters to take care of that thing. But it probably hosts a sweet barbecue party. So what about us humans? The award goes to Robert Wadlow from Illinois. He was a staggering 8 foot 11 inches, and he could pick up his dad when he was just 9 years old. Just let that sink in for a while. He ate over 8,000 calories a day, and his shoe size was 37 AA. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the...